Well, hello, everybody, and good morning. This is Michael. We love it more than you know that you are tuning in now for our 40th episode of Link Up with Loveworks. And it's at Loveworks where we believe that you are never too young to be a big dreamer and you're never too old to get started working on your dream. That's right. And our hope with Link is that each week our special guest is going to connect with you wherever you find yourself today. And they're going to inspire you to become the best version of yourself for tomorrow. Carolyn, if there's one thing that we've learned so far from our previous 30 plus guests that we've had on our live stream and our Dreamers Endures podcast is that each of them have a satiable desire for learning and for personal growth. Uh, actually, in the room that we're in, uh, we have a big black letters that say personal growth is a blast. And last week we spent just a few minutes talking about just why personal growth is important to us. And we shared a personal growth hack, which was fun. And really it's just all about taking care of, of yourself. It's self-care for the dreamer. Today we wanted just to change gears and we wanted to talk about productivity. Now, I hope we didn't scare you by just saying the word productivity. I'm sure every single one of you uh, that are watching this and listening to this are already thinking to yourself, I already have too much to do. I have leftovers from last week that I need to focus on today, and I think that's why sometimes that the beginning of your week and Mondays can be stressful and can be challenging. And so, uh, Carolyn, why don't you start us off and kick us off here with something that's been really working for you that's helped you to not just uh, do more, uh, but, to but potentially to organize just your priorities to be more productive uh, in your pr professional life. Yeah, Michael, I'm going to spend some time picking on myself first because I think with each productivity type planner, um, whether it is a digital planner or a written planner, I've given up on a lot of them. Um, I've started you know, with really great intent and really great hope that it would carry through for the entire year, but usually I make it about a month before I give it up. Um, this one though, this is the Intentional Year Daily Action Planner. It's really beaten up because I'm actually using it. Um, and so this is developed by one of our good friends, Chris Capehart, and it's a really, really simple planner. I think that's why I like it so much is because it's pretty no frills, but it's you write in the dates, um, you write down what's the most important thing. It says do what matters first, the single most important thing of the day. And then you kind of fill in your tasks that are other that are otherwise important. Quick wins. Um, I definitely love some quick wins. And they also have a really nice spot for notes. And so I'm a big doodler as well as you know. Um, and so I like having ample space for, of course, my tasks, but also for, you know, a little bit of a little, little picture here and there. Oh, I like that. I notice sometimes when our meetings go a few minutes long, which that's rare, but but if they happen to go long, you start doodling. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's probably very true. Well, you shared uh, any doodlers out there. I, I, I tend to doodle myself. So we're going to probably share along the same lines, but I'm just going to take a little different angle on it. So I would say in regard to productivity journals or planners that I've had probably better intentions than I have actually going out to buy it and work through them. And I've worked through a couple and just unsuccessfully just really didn't work for me until I found the little black book. It's not called that, but it's actually called the Productivity Planner. And I have mine as well too. And this is what mine looks like. And this has been a game changer for me. And what I really like about it is for instance, last night I spent some time, not long, you know, maybe seven to 10 minutes, and I look back at last week's tasks, my leftovers that I didn't get done. And so I began to list those out uh, and then I just flipped the page to today. So September 14th. And what I really like about it is it's categorized in th three places in three different ways. And so uh, the first part is actually just writing down the one most important task of the day. And here's what I really like about it though. So again, it's just not just about the doing and getting it done. But if you got this big task done, that you would feel satisfied. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you finish that task and it's 1030 in the morning and so you can check out and go home. That could be the case. But I really like that idea of just feeling satisfied. And then you list your secondary tasks of the day. And then lastly, you list other tasks of the day. And so the way that I like to approach it is not necessarily just by doing the big task, the most important one that's going to make me feel satisfied but really depending upon how I feel on a given day, sometimes I'll cherry pick. 
and I'll find just the quick wins of the day that can really just encourage me, inspire me uh, to really get my engine started to begin working on the other tasks. And what I like about it at the end, the end of it is you get a chance to give yourself a score on a scale of one to 10. And I like having a scoreboard. You know, can you imagine watching a sporting event and not having a scoreboard? I'd imagine the event would be less, uh, less exciting. Well, I guess right now we don't have a lot of fans watching games live, uh, but we need to know what the score is. And you don't necessarily, you know, write down the score just to, you know, be self-critical, but it's a chance for you just to be able to see just where you're at and, uh, and then see how you can improve the next day. So anyhow, hope you enjoyed a couple of those tips and tricks that Carolyn and I shared. We'd love for you to drop in the chat box what is a particular resource? Maybe it's a book that you've read or it's an audio podcast that you've listened to or maybe you have a planner and journal. Drop that in the chat box below because we'd love to learn from you. For sure. And that brings us to our roll call time as well. And so if you've joined us on our live stream today, we want to know who you are. So go ahead, comment in the comment box who you are, if you're watching with anyone, if it's your parent, um, your sibling, and where you're from, and also answer this question. So we have a fun question of the day, and that is, what food have you grown into liking? Ooh. I think that question ties pretty well into today's guest. I'd be super curious uh, to hear what she has to say about that. Uh, a food for me, I, I've had a pretty diverse palate growing up, but if there's one food that I would say I didn't particularly like as a kid, but I appreciate much more now, especially when you grill them and perhaps put it on a steak or who knows, maybe mix it in with mushrooms, is our onions. I have a whole new appreciation now for onions. What about you? I I love, I, you've I got to have a few. I I love food, um, but when I was a kid, I would not eat tomatoes. Was not about them. Did not like the texture, and so I knew they were good for me. I got lectured that a lot, uh -huh. and so I started sneaking them into my food. Where it was like, okay, I'm just gonna put this in my burger and then eat it. So it just became normal that it was there. Um, and so doing that more and more and then kind of gradually inc increasing the amount of tomato in my life uh, until now I can just eat raw tomatoes. It's pretty nice. My daughter, who is watching this right now, is like, yes, I am not the only one. <laughs> I, I like tomatoes now. I do really mm. like them now. I love it. Well, we hope we made you hungry. Uh, drop it in. Uh, answer that question. What's a food that you have grown to like? We want to get to our interview. We've been looking forward to this now for a good few weeks. So dreamers and doers here, just a quick reminder of our format. Each week on Mondays, we have the opportunity to sit down with a different dreamer and doer who gets the opportunity to share with us at least one of their dream stories. But you know, you can't stop there with a dream story and just hear about the dream. We want to hear about the journey. Uh, that it took someone to be able to get there. And we hope that it's going to encourage you to get from the place where you are today to the place that you want to get to tomorrow. And to warm you up for today's interview, we also have a trivia question of the day. And so first person in the comment box that's able to answer this correctly will send a prize directly to your house. And so the question is, how many different categories of food are there on the original food pyramid? We're talking about like the 80s food pyramid. So, so you, you prefaced pyramid. original. Yes. Okay. So how many categories were on the original food pyramid? Awesome. Well, let's get started. I'm ready, Carolyn. I know you are. Let's meet our dreamer and doer this morning. Her name is Leslie Stevens. She's the CEO and founder of Wellbeing Nutrition, and she works with all people and in particular entrepreneurs to bring out the best version of themselves. She was born and raised in California, and she set her roots down in Oklahoma after completing college and graduate school at OSU. Along with the way, she became a registered dietitian and personal trainer, and through her own transformation, she learned how the impact of taking care of your own health and well-being can truly be the catalyst of achieving things far beyond just your health. To help others transform their lives through their nutrition and lifestyles, she founded her own company, Leslie Stevens Consulting. Leslie strongly believes this world needs more happy, healthy, and confident people, and she's committed to helping people bring that version out of themselves. Hello, Leslie. Hi, Michael and Carolyn. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, great to hear your voice. Great to see you. We are so excited to have you on today. And I would imagine not only myself and Carolyn, but probably others already want to know, what was your workout routine this morning and what did you have for breakfast? 
this morning i always take a rest day on mondays actually most people say never skip a monday and i always skip my monday because it tends to be the busiest day of the week and i believe that fitness and nutrition should enhance your life and not take away from it so if you're adding in too many elements to your day and it gets overwhelming then you need to find that balance for yourself so i always skip monday and I distributed it throughout my week. And then for breakfast this morning, I had a quick protein bar. Simple and easy. Leslie, I feel like our viewers already fell in love with you by hearing that. <laughs> I certainly did. <laughs> and, and I just say that because we are gonna get into a few minutes into nutrition, of course, and your business and consulting. We're gonna hear a, a great uh, just case study and, and story of success. But I think for a lot of us that nutrition and eating well you know and fitness can be a really intimidating subject there's definitely not a lack of information out there but i think it could be challenging so how refreshing just to hear uh how you're taking care of just yourself to kick off what could considerably can cons be considered a you know tough day of the week that being mondays mm -hmm. simple easy and effective that's the way i go about nutrition well leslie we call this a dreamer and doer live stream and we're going to kick off with that question yeah, so this is a question we, of course, love to ask our guests is, do you consider yourself a more natural dreamer or a doer? Now, you're most likely both, but kind of where do you find yourself more naturally? 100% a dreamer. Always on the end of thinking outside of the box, thinking about approaching things in a new way, dreaming and creating. So not to uh, make you hungry for candy, but... Now or later, uh, what would you, what could you share with us a dream? You know, whether it's like now or even like going back to where you were in a, in a kid, what was the, what was the big dreamer uh, like, Leslie? Um, I just wanted to help people just find a life for themselves that made them happy. I mean, it, it started with me trying to create a happy life for myself, but as I grew up, and uh, I developed new skills. All I wanted to do was be able to share those with more people so that they could create a life that genuinely brought them happiness. No, it's so good. And we're gonna, we're gonna get into that and more. I mean, you're a registered uh, you know, dietitian, uh, personal trainer, uh, cycle instructor. Uh, you also have your own consulting business and we're gonna get into those things, but uh, those, uh, activities that you were involved in now weren't necessarily the Leslie back in middle school. And so can you take us back to either middle school and high school and share with us just what was it like growing up and also to part of your transformation story and journey? Yeah, definitely. If you talked to the Leslie in middle school or high school, she would never believe that I do what I do now. Because the only thing that I did back then that's even remotely close to what I do now is that I played a lot of sports, but in terms of every other aspect of my life, it was the complete opposite, especially my nutrition and just my physical and mental well-being. Now, I mean, I grew up like most kids, fast food all the time. I loved my slushies, my Cheez-Its, my, my Taco Bell, my energy drinks, you know, all the good stuff, right? But that definitely had its impact on my health. I was overweight. I struggled. I was sick often, even if it was just with the common cold. And then I struggled with my, um, with my just self-confidence and my body image, but it wasn't so much like the, all the physical factors. Those compounded on all the mental challenges that I went through during this time as well. Growing up, my mom, she was an alcoholic. So even though I have this nature of being helpful, I always try to give from a place of love. I was, tr I was convinced that I was somebody that I was not. So I was constantly told that I was a bad person, that I was doing things wrong, even though when I felt I was doing things right. Um, I was really confused about who I was supposed to be, what I was supposed to do, what I was supposed to look like, you know, all those things you struggle with when you're younger. And I really struggled with depression 
and I attempted suicide multiple times. So at that point, I realized something needed to change and I had to be the person to change that. So I started with what I knew. I started with working out. I started with taking care of myself. That led me to figuring out my nutrition. And it wasn't really losing weight. That process was, although the outcome is fantastic, what really sparked this passion of nutrition and wellness was the process. Because during that process, I, I learned that I had the ability to take control over the, over the outcome of something in my life. I took the actions that I needed to take every day to produce an outcome that I, you can't see the end of a weight loss journey. You can't see what, how it's really gonna look for you. And I learned how to trust in something bigger that I knew what I was doing on a daily basis would lead me to my ultimate goal. And then I learned how to trust myself and that what I was doing was right. And that ultimately I could apply everything that I learned throughout this journey to create a life where I was genuinely happy, healthy, and confident. And that's why I do what I do. I mean, that's why I became a registered dietitian. That's why I got my master's degree. That's why I became a personal trainer because like you said in my intro, I genuinely believe everybody deserves to be happy, healthy, and confident. And I will do anything in my power to help people create that life for themselves. So that's, that's my journey. That's where I came from. Leslie, thank you for sharing just so personally that part of your story, because I think that's a huge connect point for, for a lot of people. That's a, that's a real struggle, um, whether it is with their own health or even the view of themselves and um, trusting themselves. I think that's really really, really something that um, people do struggle with at any age, um, starting at oftentimes when they're in their teenager um, years and even ongoing. And so it's really remarkable, um, the story of you kind of overcoming that and um, just falling in love with with uh, with nutrition and, and knowing how important that is and wanting, of course, then to share that with people. I think it, it absolutely show, shares your heart. Um, for the student or the professional that is listening right now and they're kind of thinking, you know, that transformation is not for me or they're kind of settled into their ways, what would you say to that person who isn't really caring or is unsure about um, why eating well or getting rest or being just healthy in general is important? So there's one thing I want us all to do right now. Everybody who's listening, whether it's on the live or whether you're listening to this later, I want you to take a second and I want you to think about the one thing that you care about most in this world. If it is your family, if it's your friends, if it's a class you're taking, if it's an instrument you're playing, if it's a sport that you play, hold that in your mind. And once you think of that, I want you to think about if there was one factor that would allow you to put more energy into it, more time, get better at it. it would you invest in that to be able to play harder, to be able to stay longer, to be able to, to just amplify everything that you put into it, be more present in that moment? Would you do it? because nutrition and the way you take care of yourself directly affects all that. So if you put in high quality energy, you're gonna get out high quality energy and be able to invest that into your relationships, into your sports, into even math class, little things like that. You're gonna be able to pay attention longer, work harder, and just amplify everything in your life because of the energy that you put into your body and are able to give and produce. Leslie, that's so powerful. And only you, I think, can make a connection between math class and <laughs> living a better life and being healthier. It is so powerful, but so true for that brief moment that you challenged us all, you know, to, uh, you know, think about that one thing that matters to us. I just instantly just had a picture of, you know, I, I saw the family portrait 
you know, of my kiddos and, you know, my wife. And it definitely just draws a connection that I want to be the best version that I can uh, for, for longevity, you know, for the time that I have here. Well, I think what you shared is a great transition for us to get into the doing side. And we would love to begin to hear about your business, well-being, nutrition, consulting. Can you tell us, you know, just what really got you into the, what gave you the idea of starting the business, what it is, and what type of clients you serve? So I, becoming a registered dietitian, you go through a bunch of different avenues because you can work in a lot of different areas like schools, hospitals, um, different environments, but none of them really spoke to my soul. And I felt like I could create a business and a framework to really help people in the way that I wanted to help them. So I created my business to do just that. So everything that I do is based on nutrition and lifestyle transformation because you can't just take the bits and pieces everything is intertwined it works together so i have everything from a 90-day online course where people can design their own diet with my guidance and then i have group and one-on-one -on -one nutrition and lifestyle transformation coaching now i have had clients from 16 years old all the way to 65 years old. Everybody can benefit from the programs that I develop. But like you guys mentioned earlier, I really started to shift my focus to working with entrepreneurs and business owners because they have this unique lifestyle, which being one myself, I've experienced it and it has different demands. You don't just work the normal nine to five and they have this ability to influence the entire culture around them. So I've worked with about 40% of my clients already have been entrepreneurs and business owners, and they've started to take care of their health. And I have watched the people around them just start to develop healthier habits because they're watching these people who influence their environment take the steps to better themselves. And then it just creates this whole supportive community around them. And I think that is just beyond powerful. That is, I agree. Um, you're, you're influencing influencers uh, and just transforming lives even beyond the ones that you know. Um, I think that's so neat. And so you mentioned, you know, 40% of your clients are entrepreneurs or business owners, and you notice like there's this gap. So how have you been able to show them, um, you know, even though you have a alternative schedule that's not a nine to five, how do you still take care of yourself during that time? So a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners put their, put their everything into building their businesses, creating their dreams, but so often they let their health fall by the wayside while they're doing this until they look back and they have either gained weight or developed health concerns that keep them from showing up in their businesses and their lives. So what I always try and get across to them is that concept of you can't pour from an empty glass. So this is because they're the foundation of their business. They're the very core of what they've created. So they need to be strong. They need to be healthy so that they can pour the energy into their business, into their employees, their customers, and their families. And they have to be a consistent, strong decision maker. They need to be productive and they need to be able to handle the stress that comes with the job. And what that all comes down to is finding a way to integrate healthy elements into their already busy and a little bit chaotic lives. So that's where I come in, where most diets will try and fit people to their plan or whatever they think is best. What I do is I fit the plan to the person. So I always say I take from my dietetics toolbox and then we apply the certain tools that fit to their life. And uh, I really do everything based on integrating small healthy habits into their routine so that ultimately they don't even have to think about those actions at the end of the day. And another thing that I, you guys mentioned having the time to 
put into all of these different elements. We all feel like we're busy. We don't have enough time to add more onto our plate, but health and well-being is one of those things where when you invest time and energy into it, you get all of that back tenfold. Like not only are you going to spend 30 minutes a day working out, 20 minutes a week, maybe planning your meals, but that energy that you put into it can add years to your life. And not only in the long term, but in the short term, you get an immediate return of more time because you can be more productive. You can be more president present. You can do more things like you have more energy to not only spend in your business, but then you have the energy to come home and spend it with your family. So that's the largest concept that I tried to get across to business owners and entrepreneurs, not only do you use this to invest in your business, but you use it to invest in your lives. So simply put, I help them optimize their nutrition and their lifestyle so they can show up more powerfully in their relationships, in their businesses, and their personal lives. That I know. is so good. Are you, are you, are you signed up, Carolyn? What's that? Are you, are you signed up? <laughs> I was like, this lifestyle sounds incredibly enticing. I think. Well, well, it's powerful. I mean, think about, you know, Leslie, what you're just saying. I mean, anyone can think about that. I mean, you're just not, you're talking about adding years to your life, but like these are good years. And, and when you're healthier and when you're stronger, I love even just you just sharing, just even coming home from, from work. And we've all had, let's say, great days or we've had hard days, challenging days, but being able to, you know, come home and not just carry like your day, you know, into your home life. But uh, I believe if you're putting into practice, you know, what you're talking about, Leslie, you, you still have that challenging and hard day, but there's still a way that you can come back home and you can have energy and you can bring, you know, your best, you know, into that home. And I can't tell you, uh, you know, Leslie, I, I do train for as a hobby triathlons. And I can't tell you over the years how many magazines that I've picked up that I flipped through that have promised the latest and greatest 10 week <laughs> training plan. We've all kind of been there, you know, the couch to 5k plans and, and not saying that those plans don't work, you know, but ultimately you're taking something that's worked for someone who knows, maybe an athlete or a publisher or a writer, and you're trying to, you know, make that work for you. And I really like your approach, you know, where you're not making the plan work for the person, or yeah, you're saying that, making the plan work for each individual person and, and customization. So let's say we had an opportunity, I know you have lots of stories, uh, but we wanted you to share at least one of your case studies, personal success, success stories. So would you mind sharing that with us this morning? Yes, of course. And we definitely wanted to include one that had a big element to do with quarantine and this huge shift of life that we've all really gone through recently because it's something that we've all had to deal with. And I've had a client that I've worked with for a considerable amount of time and she really struggled to lose weight because in the past she had worked with so many different people and she never lost the weight. She really didn't trust herself to be able to lose it. So she started to kind of get in her own way. She would in, in simple terms, sabotage herself before she even gave herself the chance to actually stick to the things that she needed to do. So during quarantine, when everyone got uncomfortable, when everything changed, when everyone was pushed out of their routine already, I really encouraged her to just lean in to being uncomfortable, lean in to all of those elements that were changing and try to implement new things to set herself up to lose weight without all of these external factors into play. So she started to do all the habits that we put into place. I always, I always build on a foundation of healthy habits, which is taking particular actions on a daily basis. So we started with three, she stuck to those three. She started to see the results by just making sure that she did these things on a daily basis. And over time, she kept losing more and more weight, 
But through seeing those results from the work she put in, she began to trust herself to take these actions, to do the hard things, to stick to the routine, even though she didn't know for a fact if it was going to work out. Because again, you can't see those results until you create them. But she started to trust herself and trust the process. And over three months, she lost 30 pounds and she's only continuing to progress. So it was really incredible opportunity to, for her to use this shift of life to shift her into this more positive world for herself in terms of her health and well-being from her weight and health to like her mental health and trusting herself. That's such a great story. Thank you for sharing that, Leslie. And um, I think it just shows like no matter how many times like it feels like you failed that there's still opportunity out there. Um, and so I hope whoever's listening hears that. Um, we also have, of course, our middle school students and high school students listening right now. And so a question we love to ask, um, because we consider you a middle school survivor, is what's a piece of advice that you would want to share um, to your middle school self? So the one thing that I wish I knew in middle school was to always be true to yourself always do the best that you can to be who you are because there are going to be plenty of people who tell you who they think you should be or even will tell you that they don't like who you are but if you always come from a place of love if you always come from a place of trying to lift the people up around you then you can go to bed at night knowing that no matter how many people push back or try and change you that you are doing what you are supposed to do. And it will it will create this unshakable confidence that some people are gonna be intimidated by, but a lot of people are going to admire because it's no one can be you. You're the best version of you and the world needs who you are. So don't ever hesitate to show that. So good. The world definitely needs each and every single one of us, uh, you know, being able to just understand just our, you know, our value. And I love how you just talked about leading really and living at a place of love and trusting yourself. Well, Leslie, uh, we're going to get into a time of Q and A in just a few minutes, but we want to give you an opportunity to uh, speak into what we call our last minute link. Uh, and this is a chance to be able to tie just everything together, but we love to give you one minute to share whatever is on your heart to encourage the big dream uh, that is inside the dreamers that are listening and watching out there. So I think, Carolyn, you have your stopwatch somewhere. It'll be tracking our time. Leslie, are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. All right, Let's set and go. So following your dreams is probably the, like, the hardest and the most terrifying thing to do but it's also the most rewarding thing to do because no matter how many people challenge you, no matter how many times you feel like you're gonna fail or how many hard days that you have, being able to live out your dream and wake up every day knowing that you're creating something that came from your heart, that's a feeling that you cannot replace with anything else. And I think that in any path that we choose in life, it comes with its own challenges. So being able to choose your challenge leads you to a much better path of fulfillment. And don't be afraid of how long it's gonna take to reach any type of goal, because if I can instill anything in you, is it's not about reaching that goal, it's about every part of the process and everything that you learn about yourself, about people, the relationships you build and everything like that. So do not, do not hesitate to take a chance on yourself because you're so worth it. Boom. I love that. That last sentence, do not hesitate to take a chance on yourself because you're worth it. I love that. That was so encouraging. So just to recap, no matter how hard, no matter how many failures, no, how, no matter how long, the satisfaction of following your heart's calling and the process of learning yourself through that is the part that's worth it, Michael. 
So good. Well, Leslie, we're going to give you not a long break, just a short break. Uh, we would love to encourage anyone that has a question to drop that in the chat box. And we're going to bring Leslie back in just a few minutes, and she's going to answer a couple of your questions. So, Leslie, take a quick break. Carolyn, let's uh, share just a thought or two on what was one of your big takeaways from today's interview. Yeah, I, I would say one of the big takeaways that I had was when Leslie was talking about the case study um, and this one of her clients just kind of self-sabotaging and kind of not even giving her a chance. And I feel like I've, I've experienced that um, in, in things that I've done where it's like, okay, I'm going to gear myself and get ready for it. And then it's it, it all kind of relies on me um, to actually start. And so that really sticks out to me. I love that, you know, she has a, an actual story of transformation despite all of the, the failed the failed attempts previous. Yeah, no, absolutely. I feel like I had a Jerry Maguire moment. Now I'm going old school here with Jerry Maguire, but it's a scene where you had me at hello, and I feel like Leslie had me at hello when she talked about how she starts off her Mondays. We haven't asked her that question yet, and even in just our uh, pre-production, and I expected her to spout out a two-hour fitness routine and yoga and this big elaborate breakfast but I love how Leslie uh, practices self-care and that speaks to me because I do feel that I have a tendency to bring a lot of uh, pressure and gravity into the beginning of the week uh, and can be too hard on myself so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to put all that into practice and I do have to throw this out there I love and uh, I'm going to do this I could imagine like a coffee meeting you know whether it's with a student or whether it's with a professional and uh, you know, just talking through life and giving them an opportunity to think about and maybe just pause and think about that one thing that really matters and is important to them, so powerful. We'd love for you, if you have a big takeaway, drop that in the comment box below. We'd love to hear how you're being inspired by our dreamer and doer, Leslie Stevens. And speaking of, Carolyn, I think we have a couple questions. We do, okay. So this question comes in from our viewers, they say, how did you keep working towards your dream even when you were discouraged and who encouraged you? So working towards my dream, I definitely had a lot of people who pushed back, told me that I was going to fail, told me that it was not a smart move to do, but I knew that I had a bigger purpose and I knew that I could help people in a different way than they had been offered before. So even though there were so many discouraging factors, I mean, through my journey I went through before, I really learned to trust myself and kind of push back to the people who were trying to tell me who I was or were trying to tell me that I was going to fail. I had already been through that in my life before, so I knew take a chance on yourself. You've proved it to yourself before in the past. So why not give it a shot and give it your best shot? And then once I started really seeing my client success can pull me through any bad day. Like there are still bad days here and there. There are still people who challenge me and will say, well, who do you think you are? Well, every day that I hear of a client succeeding or having a breakthrough, like that's so worth it. There could be 99 negative things. And if I had that one client success, it's all worth it to me. And honestly, on days where I even doubt myself, I've had my husband to carry me through. He's been the most supportive and encouraging person I could ever ask for. I never thought it would even be possible to start a business without him. He really has set a great example for me and has encouraged me every step of the way. And I am forever grateful for that. I always say everybody can doubt me, but all I needed was that one person to believe in me and I'll take it and I'll run with it. <laughs> so good. Leslie, I think you're going to like this next question. Uh, this person wants to know how they can learn more about your business and more about your methods. So you can learn all about my business and my methods on my website, mywellbeingnutrition.com. You can also learn a lot about it on my Instagram at wellbeingdietitian. 
you can learn a lot more about the way that I look at food, the way that I approach um, just healthy living and healthy lifestyle. I work a lot with mindset and habit building way beyond just what and when to eat and the list of foods that, that you should be including in your diet. I really get into why we do what we do and developing this lifestyle. I've even had um, a client the other day, she goes, I don't want to offend you, but you're surprisingly normal. And I was like, okay, what does that mean? And she, she was like, well, you talk about real food how to eat things when like you go out to dinner or if you need convenience items you talk about how to balance when I want to go out to pizza and you do the same things in your life and I was like honestly that's the biggest compliment I could ever receive because I think people think that nutritious nutrition and fitness is some unattainable thing and I am honestly a normal person and I I love food I I like to work out because it makes my body feel good. Like anybody can attain this. So that's, that's more than I could ever ask for. Leslie, as we wrap up a question and a comment for you. So the question is, Leslie, do you happen to have a cheat food and what is it? I don't have a cheat food because I always include everything in my diet. So I don't do... I don't have like cheap meals. I don't think of food, certain foods as off limits. I'll, if I want pizza, I'll probably go get pizza. If I want tacos, I'll definitely get tacos. Tacos are my favorite food. Chips and salsa too. So it's all about finding ways about how to integrate the foods you really enjoy into your healthy lifestyle and not feeling like you're cheating or doing something bad. That makes me feel just a little bit better, Carolyn. I haven't shared this with you, but over the weekend, uh, we took the kiddos to Pop's store and drank a soda and uh, half a bag of Doritos. But that's for another conversation later. <laughs> Leslie, and the comment that I was going to make is, uh, I don't know, I'm sensing a book title in that idea of surprisingly normal. That kind of has a good ring to it. Oh, it does. <laughs> That's so great. I encourage you to do more. Leslie, you have been an absolute delight with us. Thank you so much for sharing your dream story and about the life change that are taking place in the lives of so many people. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, we hope you are encouraged and inspired by another dreamer and doer story. And speaking of dreamers and doers, we would love for you to mark your calendars for next week. Yes, next Monday. We're going to be interviewing a new friend of LoveWorks, uh, author David Skidmore. Uh, David is a person of faith, highly values his relationship with God. He loves people, uh, and he's passionate about finding creative answers to everyday solutions. Uh, he just released his brand new book called Unstuck uh, on June 23rd, and he picked that day uh, because that was the anniversary of when his mom passed away. Um, just getting into his book now is so great, and uh, we know that you are going to be inspired and also hearing and learning about the unique twist that he puts on this book in a creative way. I heard it's musical. Yes. <laughs> I dig it. Well, uh, thank you guys for tuning in, and just a reminder to visit all of our digital resources at loveworksleadership.org. Um, we even have our cell phone numbers on there in case you need to call us. Your cell phone number or my cell phone number? Both of them. Both of ours. Okay, we like just to give it away. Uh, remember, everybody, real leaders, they don't blend in, but they stand out. Dream big. And do your dream. <laughs>